Hi everyone, this is Nadia. I'm an occult specialist that uses spiritual intelligence to empower entrepreneurs into a healthy empowered money story to live a balanced life. Today we're going to be covering one of my favorite topics, the truth, and um, what I think about it, what's going on in the world, and really a reality check for many people and for myself as well. This video is, I don't know, a little bit of a rant as much as um, just, I think, very clarifying things that so many people may be feeling, may be thinking, but don't know how to articulate in words. And I guess the title of this would be, the truth is neither polite and nor is it convenient. So this is something I think every single person knows, maybe somewhere deep down, if they still have a conscience left, that is that the truth is neither polite. So what does this mean? Um, polite is something that when I think of someone that's polite, they're just, they're amicable, they're amiable. They're somebody that doesn't rock the boat too much. They're just nice, basically. And the truth is not nice. There's nothing nice about the truth because when you have to deal with the truth, you have to deal with everything that you don't want to face. And obviously the second part is it's not convenient. So what what is convenience? And for me, convenience is something that it's just easy. It's just easy to deal with. Like a lie, it's just convenient to tell somebody something. But you see, when you go in search of the truth, it's not convenient. It's going to change your life in ways that you may not want to deal with, may not have the emotional, financial, and physical resources to deal with, and simply will... Um, change the type of people that you're around, change what your expectations are from yourself, from others. So, for the most part, it goes against people's good nature to walk with the path of the truth. The path of the truth is not something that's easy. I mean, the truth, the, a lie and a truth are like two pillars. That's what I usually say. If you've got the left pillar and then you've got the right pillar, you can choose the lie or the truth from either side. It's just like I said, the lie. So for instance, it's my right hand, which will be your left for you guys. It's polite. It's sweet. You can dress it up, make it look good, make it look, like I've said, polite. Uh, it's easy in social situations. And it, the higher you get up in a social situation, the more and more fake and the more lies you have to tell that is just the nature of reality lots of people don't want to admit that when I look at people who are like status climbers and things like that that's it they're living a fake life and anything that's fake is a lie do, do fake people know they're fake that I don't know I don't know if they've ever had the chance to look in the mirror I don't mean this literally but I mean it figuratively and think well, maybe I should look inside a little more. I think by the by the time somebody gets to that point, they've already detached themselves from vanity, which is one of the things that I want to cover in this. So that's obviously the side of maybe somebody lying, somebody taking, um, somebody believing in falsehoods, basically. And then you've got the truth. Um, the truth, you don't have to defend it you set it loose and it defends itself so what's happening in the world at the moment so many people have asked me questions and maybe discussed things with me and you know it's a shit show it's only gonna get worse i don't sit here on camera and try and tell people that it's gonna get any better no nope, it's gonna get worse um it's not because i want to sit and say to people that you know you know it's it's doomsday or something that's not my point but for anybody that has a working thinking brain we know we've done our research we can see things and we see the writing on the wall the challenge with people and i'm going to try and make this uh, uh a i guess um the way to describe it is more about programming. So we've got different types of programming. We've got gender programming. This is what a man is. This is what a woman is. We've got class programming. This is what wealthy are. This is what the not wealthy are or the have or have nots as I call it. This is what a, um, a, a, a I guess, religious programming, you know, uh, this is what a religious person is. This is what they're not. Uh, culturally, this is what you are, and, and, and God forbid you go away from the, the set deviated norms of your culture, all hell breaks loose, now you're just a sellout, blah blah, you'll hear all kinds of things, okay. I had a client who actually asked me this question, I want to discuss it in this, and, and they asked me and they said, what's the reason so many people don't want to hear the truth? I said, 
Well, you know, there's no polite way of telling people that they've dedicated their entire life to a lie. That their whole entire life is one big lie. That's a shock at the core level that most people will, will literally fight to keep. It's cognitive dissonance. I don't have to go too far because there are two types of people I'll have conversations with, depending on obviously the individual. One person who perhaps had, knows me in person, has met me in person, who spent time with me in person, um, or maybe has even met me online, but they want to improve. They, uh, it, it's not like, you know, ta-da, Spark Night popped up somewhere, or I popped up somewhere, it's they came looking for something and Spark Night was in alignment with what they came looking for. For instance, uh, you know, the local supermarket doesn't need to advertise. I'm just like, okay, I need oranges, bananas, pomegranates, kiwis. Well, let's get to the grocery aisle and let's get to the fruit and veggies aisle. Okay, so it's a mutual fit. And then there's some second people who come across my work and they think, okay, this looks um interesting. And then they do it for like 14 days or whatever it is or whatever short amount of time one can imagine. And it's just too much because what people think that when I practice magic, magic is like, you know what you've been, you've been sold the lie as a child that magic is like, you know, being Cinderella and like Harry Potter, you wave this little, um, let me imagine that I have a candle in front of me. I always have the most bizarre things on my table. Last time it was a lippy tin, now it's a candle. So we're going to wave a little magic wand and everything's going to change. That's not how sorcery works. You know, my magic is not, I'm not love and light. I'm not fairy dust, I'm not unicorns, I practice sorcery, I am a sorceress, I tell people this. If that's too frightening for people, they're not, they're not um, obliged to watch my channel or correspond with me or be around me, that's, that's totally fine. And one thing I tell people often is that magic, real magic, cannot work until you work. That's the trouble with most people, that they think they'll come and they'll think that magic fixes three things and it doesn't. It doesn't fix your stupidity, it doesn't fix your laziness, and it doesn't fix people who are slow, whether it's physically or mentally. Magic generally is predisposed to work with people who are already inclined towards big incomes, uh, incomes and outcomes internally, and I mean this in both levels. So, the more, the higher, I guess I want to say, from a truth-based perspective, the higher you're vibrating, when I do that type of work, it's like a grenade, it hits you fast. The slower you're vibrating, the less result you see with the type of work I do because you're already not willing to step your shit up, basically. So what happens is many people talk a good game, their social media looks good, whatever, they start corresponding, but then you dig and I go deep fast. I have too much Scorpio energy inside me, so I dig fast. And they can't keep it up. You know, because now it's not just pretty pictures. I have to actually correspond with you. I have to sit with you. Now it's like, no, nah, this is too much. So it's so the excuse to start it. I can't afford it. It's too much for me because things start to come up. I, I'm the type of person that when you work with me or you work with the type of work I have, it's not, uh, my Spark Night work is spiritual, it's occult, it's magic in nature, it's not therapeutic. It's not like, it's not Reiki, and I, I'm please, I want to make this clear that I'm not going after anybody's professions or anything. I have a ton of respect for everybody in whatever work they choose to do. As long as you're not thieving, embezzling, lying, cheating and stealing, I really don't care what it is people do. But... My stuff is not therapeutic. It's not one of those that, you know, puts you to sleep and calms you down. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I just sit you there, turn on the bomb and, and just detonate everything. And when you detonate and everything's blown up, that makes me happy because then in the blown up, we see the pieces of what's really, really at the core of what's bothering you. And that's the level of truth that most people don't want to face because they're too frightened. They're not frightened of per se that happening. They're frightened of number one, their comfort being taken away from them, which is most people of today. They're comfortable, hence they're lazy, hence they don't want to do anything. And number two, they're more frightened of what they really are, what they're running from and what they'll find in those little rubble pieces, what they're gonna end up finding for themselves. What they'll end up finding is something called the truth. It's not polite, it's not convenient, it's not easy, and it's certainly not simple to face. When somebody shows you the truth, someone tells you the truth, the first reaction you wanna do is slap that person or swear at them.
If you've not felt that way towards someone, they've lied to you. you it's, truth is a sucker punch in the gut, man. It comes for you because someone's told you you can't dress up the truth, you can't shush it up, you can't put red lipstick on it, you can't make it look good. It's ugly and it's bitter. It's the only thing that's gonna make your life worthwhile and set you free in life. But we, I'm gonna go into the next topic of, I kind of tie it in with money and ego as well because there's a lot of things I wanna say in this round. Lots of people don't, it's not surprising that they, they, they need real help. Now, I'm not talking about, per se, a specific area. It could be finances. It could be the love life. It could be health. You know, maybe they're struggling to get their weight under control. It could be spirituality. Maybe they, they want to be able to connect to the spirit world and they, they can't for some reason. I think of whatever challenge you've had. But guess what? The biggest problem between you and that challenge is your own ego. I've seen people, I've interacted with people where I think, man, if this person didn't just have such a big ego, I could have helped this person. But the person don't want to listen to me because maybe they've made more money than me. Maybe they look better than me. Maybe they're at a socioeconomic status that they think, why would we listen to her? Or what has she got to give me? Or if, if for a gender perspective, there's a lot of arrogant men who think, what can a woman teach me? There was a guy who said that to me. You can't teach me shit, you're a woman. I felt sorry for him. I didn't even try and argue back. I just, I looked at him and I felt so sorry for him. And he's like, women don't know what they're doing. Women can't be good leads. I said, okay, if you want to continue with your misogyny, just go somewhere else. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference to me. I know what I am. And is all ego because it's ego talking because he can't humble himself and think oh maybe a woman actually does know more, more than me maybe i can learn there's a lot of male clients i have there are lots of men that i enjoy i don't teach down at them like the way i, I deal with men is, is not teaching down at people i don't do that with women it's one thing because you, you're talking from one woman to another that's one thing but with guys it's always an ego thing and traditionally men with big egos don't like me they don't like coming to me they don't they might read my work in silence in, on my blog and never tell me they might watch these videos but they'll never tell me because that means that now they have to drop their pride to tell me it's like oh now she'll have one over us i don't play immature childish games I'm not in grade school, I'm not in high school, and I don't care. I'm not here to win a high school popularity contest with people. The price of, pe the price of speaking the truth is sovereignty. There's nothing anybody can take away from you. You don't have to remember anything when you speak the truth. You don't have to be like, shit, what did I say to this person last time? Oh my god, I have to remember that. You just tell people things as is, and you take your peace and go. Now the truth... Um, is the, uh, I was about to say the, the, the bipolar opposite, I don't know why, but okay. Uh, is the polar opposite to uh, lies, propaganda, and the status quo. The status quo in society teaches you to be a loser. There is no polite way for me to say this, so that's exactly what I'm gonna say. It teaches you to be mediocre, it teaches you to be boring, it teaches you to be dull, and it teaches you to be average. That's just part of life, which is why people think anything that's not those four categories is weird, is different, is strange, is alien. One of the biggest things that I always struggled with as a child was I didn't know where to fit in. I didn't know where to go because everybody just had pedestrian thoughts. They had mundane thoughts. I was like... But I see the world differently. I don't see that. And, you know, there's, there's people where when I see people have limiting beliefs, unless they're a client who's paid me hundreds or thousands, I don't deal with their limiting beliefs. I don't care when people's limiting beliefs come in conversation. I'm like, see, that's exactly why you are the way you are. When I was younger, I remember my biological father once said to me, he's just like, and it's rude and it's mean, but it's true. People who don't know how to manage their money work for people who can. I thought, man, that's, that's, that's harsh, man. I thought to myself, wow, that's harsh. Anyway, my dad was successful with money, so I thought, oh, maybe he doesn't know, he knows something I don't. So I started doing my own work or whatever it is. Years, 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 years have gone. It's not a polite thing. It's not a nice thing, but it is true. 
because it's easier to outsource your financial control to somebody else. It's easier for someone to deal with whatever it is, whatever you got going on, and just pay you a little bit at the end because you don't have to deal with anything. See, when you take financial control of your life, you have to deal with everything. You have to make tough decisions. You have to make mature decisions. A lot of people have missed the maturity rounds. There are few people in today's world I can sit and say, I take advice from that person because they're mature. The number one problem with people of today is not stupidity, it's immaturity. They deal with situations like a 12-year-old child because that's where their mental fortitude or their emotional resilience and reservoirs stopped. 12, 13 is where most people stop, that's it, or maybe even younger. When I look at some people, I'm like, that's, that's, that's a seven-year-old child talking. I'm not, I'm not, sitting, I'm gonna, I'm not uh, obliged to sit here and take you seriously. You know, there is a guy, and I won't mention his name. Almost every online entrepreneur knows this guy. His software is very good. I personally have not used it, but I know it's good. And it's made people a lot of money. So sometimes I see his ads, whether or whatever platform it is. And I always think to myself, for a guy who's made so much, he still behaves like a little boy. Personally, when I look at him, I'm not required to take him seriously. I look at him and think, all right, yeah, cool. He knows what he's doing in business, but he has no idea about life. And this, this man, if I believe, is a husband and a dad of two kids. We're not obliged to take anything that's immature seriously. If you really, really want responsibility, you want to take the driver's seat of your life. There are a lot, a lot of people who have made a ton of money, but they have 30 mil worth of depth. Their depth is even smaller than this little cup I have. It's painful because I think if we could expand those people and their depth would match the money, they'd, as one of my friends said, they'd be the size of the ocean. They'd be limitless. But they've done a lot of developmental work in terms of mental stuff they've not the soul there's no soul maturity there's no emotional maturity so they're still running around like children they're still they're still doing you know crazy videos and ads and stuff i mean and that's their audience and when i think uh, there's two men i know who followed that guy's stuff they behave like him too they behave like children so that's 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 what's attracted to them like oh yeah you know he kind of reminds me of peter pan this guy i'm talking about you know he's got this still thinks he's a little boy i mean i don't know how old the guy is maybe he's in his late 30s or something and it, you know that gets a certain point where you look at someone's biological age and you think nah man there's something wrong with you you know seriously you got that much money get help for yourself seriously you you, you need help you obviously need help whether it's counseling whether it's sometimes we don't know where to start seriously if that's the case come talk to me that's fine but like I've said, the truth is never easy to deal with. People don't want their ideals challenged. They don't want their beliefs challenged. But most of all, they don't want to sit and think, oh my God, everything I believe is a lie. I remember having this conversation with a girl a few months ago. And she said, we have to work a job. Because if we don't work a job, how are we going to be able to pay for our expenses or how are we going to be able to, I don't know, live? Basically, living arrangements. And I understood. And obviously, she has employee consciousness. That's nothing wrong with that. But that's the first place her mind defaulted to. The default is your programming. I said, no, you don't need... I just said to her, and I could, t I could tell she was offended. And I said, no, you don't need a job. But that's what you've been trained since birth. That's what your parents told you, more than likely because they also work jobs. You'd be surprised, people watching this who have kids, you'd be surprised what your children pick up about the world through you. I think, I thought it was very normal to run a business. Why? Because my father did. I, I saw him, many, many men under him running a business, running, you know, having land, having construction. I just thought, oh, okay. So, I mean, it was a rude awakening for me to find out that, okay, so not everybody's dad has their own business it, it, was, it was a bit of a shock I was like oh and it, it, it clicked in my head and it took me a long time to work out because in my mind man equals entrepreneur so when I saw that wasn't the case I was confused because then it, it was like well how do I process this construct think of a man 
think if his mom has always had long hair and then he meets women with short hair, it's like, it's not conscious, it's subconsciously, there's going to be question marks in the head. This is just how we're programmed. And it's societally, there's this hypnotic rhythm that takes so long, piece by piece by piece by piece, to learn the right way. From, from, from birth, maybe even in utero, who knows. You are given the playbook of everything that goes against you. That's why most people are not successful because the programming is running on everything that's the complete opposite of what should actually be happening. This is not by mistake, this is by design. Schools do not teach education for the most part. Especially in the West, if it's if you haven't paid to go to school, don't consider yourself educated. Please don't, because that would be a, a barefaced cheek and a lie to say that anybody's educated if they've gone to a type of school. It's a place where you went when your parents were at work or also because the state comes and finds you. Real education is always paid for. That's gonna that's another harsh truth people don't want to hear. Okay. Real education is always paid for developing countries. I've partially studied in the West, partially studied in outside the West. And developing countries education is far, far, far more superior than anything I could have ever seen in the West unless you've gone and paid X amount of thousand basically to go and study. This is not by accident. Schools usually teach people just to go get jobs and that's it, and just be a quiet little sheep and don't do anything. And then, you know, if you if your livelihood is tied to the fact that you constantly have to be subservient, there's a certain level of truth that you can't reach, and that's painful. And everybody who's watching this video knows that as the truth. It's just sad, but it's part of life. Like I've said, it's not polite and it's not convenient. So coming back to the ego and money. The truth is that nobody ever, ever changes with money. That's, that's, that's a lie. What happens is that money is an expander, it's an amplifier, and it shines, like I said in the previous video, a very big torch on who you are, what you are, what your capacity is, what you can do, and it makes you see things from a clear lens. When you are in the struggle to constantly feel like I need to do this, I need to do that, it's never enough. And whether well, whether you are financially successful or not successful, here is I'm talking about lack consciousness or scarcity consciousness. There's going to be a bit of an issue with that. So now your mind has to sit and think, okay, I remember speaking to this lady many, many years ago, about six, seven years ago. And I said to her, <sighs> Go away and list me 10 ways you can bring in money. And she said to me, no one's hiring. And I said, who mentioned a job? You see, it goes back to programming. The truth, when you, when you walk the path of the truth, it shatters your programming. It shatters societal programming. The, the whole hum status quo. Nobody ever found success being status quo. If you're not status quo, everybody who is status quo looks at you weird. Because now they have to confront the fact that, well, if everyone's wearing a mask and you are not wearing one, this person's a threat. They don't think, okay, maybe this person knows something I don't. This person's a threat. Down with them. Boo. Hive and mob mentality is a scary thing, man. I'm telling you, that's the reason lots of successful people just stay to themselves and they just stay away from the limelight, stay away from the public. Why is it so hard to find people who talk about the truth? Because the truth has penalties and prices. The more lies you tell in the world of the devil, the higher you get elevated. Look at entertainment industry, look at the celebrity industry. If I could sit on camera and name those kind of, the kind of things people have to do to get to whatever perfume line or whatever brand that you guys seem so enamored and fascinated by, Forget touching those items, you won't even look at them. But the magic they're using is so strong, it makes most people blind. You're not practicing it, you won't see it. The biggest revolution always starts with yourself. The biggest revolution is turning off a TV, 
I have one behind me, I barely watch it. I mean, it's there, cool, but okay. And asking yourself, what's the narrative? What are they trying to push? Why are they trying to push it? And what's going on? And what truth, What what is it I'm, I'm avoiding and hiding within myself? Because if you if, if your life is one big lie, then to believe another little lie is going to be easy because it's comfortable. You don't have to look in the mirror and you don't have to face what's wrong. You don't have to make difficult decisions. Conflict, conflict creates opportunity. Most people are afraid of conflict because they come from abusive and dysfunctional households where your money is either cut off from you. I have experience with that. Probably be chucked out on the street. You get beaten in your household, or whatever it is, whatever, whatever dysfunction you guys want to look at, basically, is that. <coughs> so what happens is, you learn to keep your mouth shut. <sighs> Stick your head above the parapet too much, they're going to take you out. Whether it's the people you're living with at home, whether it's status quo, whether it's your employer. Whichever you want to... Um, I guess, look at it from a broad perspective. The moment you're afraid to criticize somebody, the moment you are afraid to say something, well, that person's already manipulating you. They already got a hold over you. They already got a control over you. I, I actually used to have a client like that, not many, many years ago. I found myself falling in a pattern <coughs> where Too much was never enough. And the truth was, the client had a narcissistic personality. Too much was never enough, no matter what I did. Ne not grateful, not happy, just demanded, 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 demanded more. To the point I thought to myself, okay, well, I've tried what I can and if you don't want to, I'm not here to school people, man, you know, this is for people, I went to an event last year and I said to somebody at the table I don't know how people get up and say that they, their parents didn't teach them this or they don't know this I don't know man, there's YouTube just learn it, find it, do it to yourself but the reality and the truth and I'm gonna go back and wrap up this video is it's easier for someone not to be successful because success takes work anytime you point out where someone is going wrong they don't want to hear it people of today don't want to hear anything they don't want to hear anything that's going to help them they don't want to hear anything and they, they they're stuck in their own they're stewing like a fucking pig in their own bullshit they don't want to hear what's going to help them they don't want to hear that stop eating 50 donuts a week otherwise you're going to die then they will have the cheek to cry when the doctor says okay you got 60 days to live i say you know what good let them die because they chose that for themselves. When you choose stupid shit, it's like my friend Spartan Veronica always says, you play stupid games and you win stupid prizes. It's, it's very, very simple. The more success you have, success just doesn't mean money, the more work you've done on yourself. The little, the little, the little, your sympathy begins reducing. Sympathy is different to empathy. I have empathy for people. Sympathy means feeling sorry for people. Feeling sorry for people is victimhood. I have no interest in that. But one thing I will say is that your life is a reflection of your thoughts, where you're at. If you want a better life, start asking better questions. Start asking yourself the hard questions and put yourself in places that helps you grow, helps you push yourself, you know, move forward. This, this video is not for everybody. It's for people who actually have taken the self-started, dedicated path to grow. It's not for people who kind of sort of kind of want something and then a year later you check and they're still in the same place that's not grow if you just want to make excuses all right so truth is not easy to hear it's even harder to tell all right like comment share subscribe i hope to hear with whatever you guys have to say about the truth if there's any truth that you want me to cover in subsequent videos um i'll be more than happy to do that any questions shoot it down in the chat box below or email us at support at the Take care. I hope you have a good day ahead. Bye.